Available now on Blu-ray from Severin Films is Massacre at Central High from 1976. This is a movie that I originally saw on one of the Boston TV stations. Growing up in New Hampshire, we had the Boston stations, WLVI, Channel 56, Channel 38, WSBK, and out of New York, WPIX and Channel 11. And those, they were just movie-centric channels. They were movie-heavy channels. Independent stations, they would run, you know, a movie at noontime, they would run a movie somewhere around eight o'clock, and then on the weekends you would get a lot of movies throughout the course of the day if there wasn't a sporting event. So in those days before home video, before HBO, Cinemax, Movie Channel were really everywhere, these were the ways that a lot of us and people older than me really feasted upon films and built that initial film knowledge. So one afternoon, one Saturday afternoon on one of those channels, I saw this movie, Massacre at Central High. Could have even been a weekday afternoon when I was home from school, on PIX for that matter. And I saw it and it was like disturbing to me because I'd never seen a movie quite like this before. And then it became like incredibly hard to find. It had a VHS release in that era, but then as far as I recall, no legitimate DVD release. And there was something that was always holding it up. And finally, Severin Films this last year or so has released Massacre at Central High on Blu-ray. Uh, gorgeous transfer. I'll start off with that. Just watched this last night. So my experience with this movie was always like a 16 millimeter TV print that was beat up. I did see this theatrically. The Mahoning Drive-In Exhumed Films ran this within the last year or so on 35. But the print was, you know, a little older. I've never seen the movie looking like this. The colors are vibrant. It's razor sharp. It just looks good. And that's the, the thing about a really good modern um, HD transfer, Blu-ray transfer. And, and I was talking to a friend about this yesterday. DVD transfers were a huge step up in their day because they would go back to the elements and it was sharper than you'd ever seen. And it would be, you know, the actual aspect ratio that you normally hadn't seen. But there's, and you figure Blu-ray is like, ah, so it's a little bit sharper. In some cases, it's a little bit sharper. And in some cases, it's such a restoration that you're like, wow, I didn't know this movie could look like this. That's the case with Massacre at Central High. What is this movie about, you rambling fool? Massacre at Central High is a revenge story. You would you probably put it in the horror category, but it could also be considered a drama. Uh, Daryl Maury plays this guy who's the new kid in school, and we open this movie with, we actually open the movie in an interesting way. He's jogging along the beach to this sort of melancholy, somber music, and you basically get all these flashes of all the bad things that are gonna happen in this movie, which, seeing this again, I was like, wow, that's the kind of thing I would see at the end of a film, maybe, but at the beginning, it, it kind of gives away what's gonna happen to some degree. But I guess, out of context, if you've never watched the movie before and you see these things, you're just like, wow, that's, maybe he's got bad memories of something where he was before. Maybe they're like nom flashbacks for a high school kid. So Daryl Mari is the new kid in school. Andrew Stevens, very young Andrew Stevens, is an old friend from another time when they lived somewhere else. And he welcomes him into this to the new school and into this clique of these basically preppy bullies. These guys who think they're ruling the school and they think they're doing people favors by bullying them and shaming them and beating on them and doing things that I guess they justify it if anybody who's got a critical or authoritarian eye asks, oh yeah, we're helping him out. We, you know, we jabbed a knife under that guy who can't climb the rope in gym class, but he climbed two extra feet this time. So I think we did him a favor. Mari doesn't like being involved with this kind of thing. He's looking at it and he kind of goes along at not participating, but he goes along physically with that group a little bit until he's like, yeah, I don't like this. And he starts standing up for the people who are being bullied. And the bullies of course don't like that. And they eventually do something that injures him, and that sets off the main meat of this film, which is a series of things that appear to be accidents that basically uh, start eliminating the bullies one by one. And the movie goes in other directions beyond that, which I don't want to get into. Uh, I really hate talking about the plot at all, but I guess probably most people want to know a little bit about something before they watch it. So basically, it's a revenge movie. It's a teenage high school revenge movie. It is said that... It either I don't know if it's been admitted to be a strong inspiration for the movie Heathers, but it's very similar in tone. And Heathers is much more of a comedy. This is played really pretty straight, although elements now with hindsight and the distance of decades are laughable. It's very 1976. Uh, former soap heartthrob Steve Bond is one of the bullies, and he wears very wide bell bottoms. And, you know, some of the cars, some of the music choices in the film seem a little uh, out of place for what's going on at that time. Something really, really horrible happens. And then the music that's playing afterwards feels like something you might hear in a Love American style, which feels a little weird. 
Uh, really good cast. You've got Daryl Maury, who's excellent as the lead. You've got Andrew Stevens. You've got Kimberly Beck, who people know from many other things, including one of the Friday the 13th movies. You've got uh, Rainbow Smith, Lonnie O'Grady, who would be on Eight is Enough right around this time. Um, you've got Robert Carradine. A lot of people before they went on to do something a little bit better known than this. And it really is just this, for me, fun kind of drive-in exploitation horror movie that looks and sounds amazing in this transfer. It's one of those transfers where the opening credits come up and they are so vibrant and they look so much not like a part of the film, if that makes any sense, that it looks like they were almost video generated and slapped on. They're not, they just look so good. So excellent presentation on this. A bunch of extras, you've got uh, trailers, TV spots, radio spots for the film. You've got a still gallery. You have a projection booth. Great podcast. If you've got an interest in a film, these projection booth podcasts do these deep dives into the films where they interview at length everybody who they can find who's associated with the film. Um, from that, there are interviews with a lot of the cast and crew. Um, journalist, my, my close personal friend, uh, horror journalist Michael Gingold, interviews Renee Dodler, the, the director on the extras and it's it's a really nice package overall. I mean, even if it was just the movie, I would be recommending this because I really think it's a good, pretty much forgotten film because it was only available in the underground bootleg uh, torrent world for the longest time. But uh, I really enjoy it. It's, uh, it's an interesting little slice of 1976 that has been really unavailable for a very long time. Thematically, it gets into, it uses high school as like a microcosm to look at like fascism and, you know, bullies and fascism and people ruling with an iron fist for their own personal gain or pleasure or satisfaction and people who choose to go along with that or not. Uh, it's really, really good. It's out now. Uh, MVD is now distributing this. So available on Blu-ray from Severin Films. Originally, it was a steel book that was kind of pricey, but this is a regular release that's a bit more in the general area of what a Blu-ray would cost. Massacre at Central High.